what happened in May 2019? We went back really? up to Crumlin yeah. and she had minor, a minor heart procedure, mm. surgery, and it was, a, it was a massive thing for Emmeline. Was she strong enough to go through surgery? And she did. She had the surgery. She came out the far end of it. She it was the biggest hurdle that she could have to get over, and it was, it was an incredible feeling for us because we were so nervous going into that. How old was she at that point? She was five months old. I remember visiting the, the, the heart unit hmm. and I asked them, how do doctors operate on hmm. something so delicate? And they said, it's like operating on a strawberry. The heart is so small. They're magicians. And they're magicians. They're and magicians. she came out of that surgery. Yeah. And we, about a week later, we had our bags packed, ready to go home. And she took a turn the night before we were due to go home. Most of my clothes were back in Cork. And she went into ICU from there and Ten, 10 days later, she, she died in Lanley's arms. Um, and I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, it was just the rawest emotion imaginable. Um, it's impossible to put into words, to be honest with you. Um, I don't think there are words, to no, be honest there aren't. with you. I'm not going to ask you for words because sometimes you just have to accept it that uh, something is too cruel. Mm and too unfair mm -hmm. to be discussing, other than to say that you now had to face a life without her. Uh, this little ball of loveliness that you had for so long, or for so short, but enough to, for you to say you, you wanted know, for the rest of your life. She fought so hard. And, Did she? And we fought so hard. Yeah. And honestly, the, the medical staff we dealt with in Crumlin Seawitch, they fought so hard. Like we really all, we really did. and and. We were devastated, they were devastated. I could tell from them, they were crying with us. It just, it was, it was so cruel that, that, that she didn't make it. And after she died, you know, we got to bring her home, but then we had to face into what no one should have to face is, which is, you know, picking out our coffin, picking out a grave plot. And the house when we were at home was, it was, there was so much activity. There was nurses in and out. We had her oxygen machine on and now it was just silent. You know, the machines were turned off. It was just silent and it was, it was unbearable, the silence. And honestly, my, my body still like longs for her, like physically longs for her, the weight of her holding her to kiss her to cuddle her. It's, it's overwhelming at times. It's, it's so recent. Yes. You yes. know, I mean, I, I don't know if anyone could be, a, you know, even processing it still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's so awful. Uh, you know, the, the, the reason we're talking about Crumlin tonight and, and to hear a story like yours is because whenever you go there, you realise how invested the staff are, mm -hmm. the way they fought for you, mm -hmm. and the way they, they mourn with you, yeah. and they cry with you. Yeah. There's kindness in the air up there. Mm -hmm. And they, they went to the funeral with you, is that right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And was that important to you, that, 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 yeah. that the kindness travels? Yeah, seeing the nurses and doctors coming up to us at the removal and the funeral, it, it just shows they're, they're such compassionate people, and it's... As we said already, they're magicians, but they're just such, so compassionate and, yeah. and loving and they care for each and every patient and particularly the children. It's just it's such a special place.